welcome to another exciting edition of Million Dollar Peddlers. I'm Paper Guy. And I'm Mr. Magazine. One of the big problems that we've had recently is the sound's a little bit screwed up. I'm a little bit louder, so we think if we muffle me, maybe that would help a little bit. That would work. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Um, so actually today, the theme of today's show is tips. And we're going to try to help you with a lot of various tips that we've learned throughout the years um, in order to save you time, save you money, and save you aggravation. And so why don't I start with the first one. One thing that I do a lot of times is if I'm shipping things priority, um, you know, you want to ship things safely. If you're shipping them in a box, mm -hmm. I use the priority padded flat rate envelopes a lot of times, put the items in there, set it up so it's good enough to mail all by itself. Yeah. And then I stick that inside the box. Sure. Oh, because yeah. I figure that way it's got a lot of padding on it. And because I'm shipping priority, you're allowed to do that. Um, mm -hmm. I do, a lot of times people will cut up priority boxes and that sort of thing and use them as a filler in a non-priority item. And that you are not allowed to That's do. That's a no-no. That is definitely a no-no. And the rule is, if you use any part of priority anywhere in, you could be charged a priority rate. Yeah. Um, so for instance, if you were to do that trick and ship something out media mail, which they are allowed to inspect, yeah. if they were to open it and find that you had used priority envelopes for padding, they can legally charge you the priority rate. Oh, yeah. Which could get real, real well, expensive. Even, even if you don't use a padding inside, if, if it's supposed to go priority. Oh, yeah, if it's supposed to go priority. priority right, right. Yeah, so. but, but even if it's legitimately allowed to go <clears throat> right. media mail, if yeah. you use any packing materials uh, yeah. that say priority or express, yeah. you could end up getting hit with those charges. But if you're shipping things out priority... I use the padded envelopes uh, kind of as filler type yeah. deal um, to, to ship those out. So that, that'll help you some right there. Nice. Do you have any tips? Oh, I got a bunch. Where do I begin? Um, so Probably for, the first well, one. I'll begin in the morning. So I get to my shop in the morning at 3 a.m. and I got to print 400 orders, 300 orders, okay. whatever it is. Generally, the average is out to about a ream of paper a day. Okay. Which, you know a week that's seven reams and a couple weeks that's a case so it does add up you know monthly annually so what i do is um the problem with amazon when you, ebay's great you get one sheet it comes right out no problem and you save on ink as well with the one sheet amazon however forces you to use two sheets because you have the order on one sheet and the label on the second sheet you know so and sometimes you know um, i mean doing internationals i'll get five i'll print i get to print the item and then five pages come out so I, what I do is I save all my extra paper that I'm not using for the labels that came through the printer. I save them up, and then when I'm done after printing, I reverse them and put them back in the printer. So, you know, I'm, it sounds like nothing, but you're saving 20, 30, 40 sheets a day. You know, it might be a ream a month you save, and at the end of the year, you might save 100 bucks. you know. Um, but uh, that, that definitely helps for me. Um, also, uh, when I'm printing, I use a, I, all my computers have the same printer, so I buy the same toners, you know, so it's just easier to, you know, if one goes out, if we have extra you know, we you just go swap, from, out, yeah, swap yeah. out from the warehouse or whatever. So that's, you know, we probably got six, seven of the same printer. Um, but when it gets low, it'll tell you that, you know, black ink is low. You pull it out and, you know, what's that? Dan you can shake it like that dance, uh, you know, the Mexican dancer to shake it. Oh, cucaracha. Yeah, there cucaracha. you go. Yeah. Oops, so, hopefully, yeah. hopefully that's not a copyright. Uh, uh, <laughs> but, yeah, just shake it for like 30 seconds and then you can get maybe another day or two out of it. So, you know, that helps you right there. You know, little things like that. So. Well, I've got a little tip over here as well. And I didn't used to do this. And um, this definitely will help you with your invent cont uh, inventory control as well. And that's if you're putting a lot of things together and it's possible to do so, bag the lot. And yes. I didn't used to do that. And I used to have to go and look and it'd be like, oh, it's four postcards. Well, the problem is when you list the four postcards, all four of them are together. Mm -hmm. As you start to go through the postcard box... Three of them are together and one is somewhere else. And then two of them are together and one yeah. is somewhere else and one is somewhere else. And so on until you've got four separate all the way through. So all I do now, and it, it, it's waste common of time sense. Too. Waste of a waste of time. Waste a lot of time. And sometimes you can only find three of the four. Yeah. As I take them, I bag them. They will not get lost. When I go to pack, they're already bagged. So that saves me time right there. Yeah. And another little trick that a lot of people don't think about. Say I've got four comic books in a lot. Mm-hmm. And um, remember that bad uh, Marvel series, Jack of Hearts? I happen to be thinking yeah. of this because I did have that lot. Yeah. Um, I'll take one, two, three, four, put them all in a bag. But on the front, I have one. And on the back, I have four turned around. 
Why, you ask? Because if I'm going through it and I quickly go through it and I miss it and I'm turning them over, yeah. I've got on the back as well. So it's <laughs> on both sides. So right. it will save you a little bit of time doing that. And, nice. you know, it, it's super easy to do. I mean, you're putting them in a bag anyway, so you have one each each way. Yeah. Do you have any more tips? Um, one thing my father taught me years ago, uh, lighter fluid. And I don't like to tell eBay buyers about this but it does save you some time and makes your items worth more valuable so so you got a sports illustrated with residue on the cover or if they pulled the mailing label off you know especially with glossy covers lighter fluid will take those items off and now there's also i think gooby gun and other things like that but um there was one time where um my dad had a rare yankee bat and it was worth a thousand dollars unsigned well at one point we had like some nobody yankee sign it they're like man it's worth less with this autograph on there I think it was Steve Sachs, actually, from the Yankees. But, you know, it's worth less with him on there. So how are we going to get it off? Lighter fluid. How he knew to try that is beyond me, but it wow. worked. And it got the ink off the, the bat. So, uh, yeah, definitely lighter fluid's good for covers, you know. I mean, obviously, be safe. Don't be smoking or putting <laughs> flames onto your magazines. But uh, that would certainly work. I, I know when you're dealing with magazines, a lot of times um, the page, it's unpaginated. Um course it is no. <laughs> so you, you'll want to give a quick uh page count now obviously if you've got something or other that's you know this thick you're not going to count pages no. but if you've got a booklet something like that and the pages are not numbered a quick little way to do it is count till you get to the staples multiply by two and it just seems like common sense but a lot of people don't do that they'll actually count all the way through one two you know two four six eight twelve till they get to 24 pages you only need to count to 12 Cut your time in half there. And the other nice thing about it is as you're doing it, as you're paging through, do a quick tiny, just tiny, tiny little pull on the page. Why? Because if the other side has been clipped, odds are when you do that, oh, it came out in my hand, then you know it's not complete because you know the other side's been clipped. But you don't right. have to count all the way through both sides because people usually do it. And then do a quick fan through too that you're looking for a coupon clipped or that kind of thing because you can see that. Now, obviously, a... Uh, a 400 page magazine you're not going to do that but on a lesser magazine you probably could and that ties into yet another little tip we deal in magazines all the time yes what's and i, and I kind of gave it away there but what's one of the biggest problems that you what's one of the biggest complaints you get about magazines um it doesn't happen very often but missing pages missing pages and i was going to chime in because i do not we, i do not have my employees calling pages because it's literally one out of every thousand magazines we sell if that even has missing pages so for me to pay them if it takes 20 seconds every magazine and they're listing 200 magazines a day that's a lot of magazines and to have none of them have missing pages you're wasting all that time and money so if you have employees obviously it's your call but for me, it, I think it's just a waste of time and money to have them counting every page. See, every and I magazine. would disagree with you in one case. And that would be if well, you picked up things from a collection mm -hmm. and you're going through because, you know, you want to see what content is this or that. Yeah. And you grab the first magazine off and you're doing a quick run through just to mm -hmm. see what the content is. Yeah. And all of a sudden, a couple of pages fall out in your hand. Yeah. Well, and you yeah, grab then, the second one. Then you got to check. Then it. you sure. have to check all of them. Yeah, I mean, there's other circumstances like those teen magazines. Yep. You know, there's always cutouts and stuff. So we've had issues with those in the past. So we check those all the time. Jack and Jill yeah. with the centerfolds. If it's, a, if it's a Mad magazine or something that has certain inserts, we make sure those items right. are in there. Or if it says poster on cover, we make sure the poster is inside and they're listed accordingly. Um, but generally, you know, customers do get mad when they have pages missing. I try to explain to them. I go, we, we give you our best prices. But we just don't look through them because it doesn't happen very often. You know, right? Other but, than other than those titles right. where you would expect it, and, yeah. that, and that leads you into a, or leads me into another tip over here. If I go out to a sale and I see the person's got scrapbooks filled with pages of movie stars, mm -hmm. and then I see. They've got a lot of magazines. Oh, true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will pick one or two up with the expectation I'm not going to buy them. Mm -hmm. Because my expectation is those scrapbooks with those pictures came, came from, from somewhere. somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so I will yeah. look. That being said, there is money to be made buying those magazines as long as you're aware that they're incomplete and you're buying them as such. That's when you go to the estate sale dealer or the person selling them and you say, hey, did you know these aren't complete? 
Yeah. They're great magazines. They're just not complete. I really, I would love to buy them, but I can't because they're not complete. Right. They may not have known that they weren't complete. A lot of times that ends up happening, and what they might end up saying is, oh, wow, nobody's going to want them because they're not complete. Right. You know, well, give me a good enough price, and I can take them all oh, off yeah. your hands. And a lot of times you can end up buying them because I've had cases before where I had a lot of the teen magazines, and I lotted together six, eight teen magazines that were incomplete. Yeah. And they ended up going for sure. 5 $6 an issue. Yeah. But I came out and said, look, these aren't complete. It's missing this. It's missing right. that. It's missing that. Um, so it's not necessarily the kiss of death, but if if you've got titles that you have the expectation that they might be missing something, do take the time to at least go through a couple of them. Now, obviously, if I picked up a lot of 100 Time magazines, which people don't usually clip, and I go through two or three of them, I'm not going to go through all 100 because right. the odds are that if, you know, it, if yeah. a random three are not clipped. Sure. Um, and another thing, too, a uh, tip on that, too, with the, with the teen magazines and that, what happens to all of us, unless you're Benjamin Button? We get older. We get older. When are we more likely to color things or clip things or do all the puzzles? Oh. When we're younger. Sure. So if you buy a collection from somebody and you know they were six years old at the start and for whatever reason their mom didn't know they didn't still want Jack and Jill magazine when they were 12... <laughs> Odds are that the issues when they're 12 years old are probably in really good shape. Yeah. Yep. Whereas the ones they're in six may be tattered and torn sure. and ripped up and all that kind of stuff. So if you see a large collection of those, check the early ones and check the late ones. And you may see that as time went on, yeah. they've changed because all of a sudden, you know, they're 12 years old. They're not interested in Jack and Jill anymore, but their mom bought them a six year subscription back in the day. Yeah, true. You know, and didn't pay any attention to it. Hey, you know, or your grandma right. yeah. <laughs> who just doesn't pay any attention at all. And you're always a little kid to your grandma. <laughs> you know, I still think she's sending me highlights magazine with that goofus yeah. and gallant. Nice. Um, did you have any more tips? Well, uh, let's see boxes. We all have boxes. We all ship out boxes. We get boxes returned. And save them. We save everything. Even if it's a return item, we save all the contents. We can reuse it for whatever. Even if we cut the cardboard up and use it as filler or protection, the sleeves, um, any type of box we get, we definitely save it because you, you never know. It takes up space sometimes, so we may fill a box with a bunch of boxes broken down to save space, but definitely it saves you money. Some boxes can cost two, three, four, five bucks, so you know, it's like throwing money away. You know, and we know we're going to use them. If we don't use them now, we'll use them at Christmas time. And I think you were going to say something else about when you get in a shipment of boxes. Yes, the mailing boxes that they come in, we save. For example, banker boxes. You know, you get 10 banker boxes that are flat, and they come in this, like, kind of looks like a picture frame box, mm -hmm. which if you went to the UPS store, that's probably 15 bucks. So we save those. We get a lot of them, so we, you know, we might throw a couple out there, you know, beaten up, but um, we get them in all the time. But, yeah, those are great for anything that's, you know, a big poster, a frame picture. So definitely, if you got the room, definitely save the boxes. Now, I've got uh, another tip that'll, that'll save you money. What do, with numbers, what do a lot of people like? Even numbers, right? Okay. $10, $20, oh, yeah. $25, $35. Sure. So if you're bidding at an auction for something, bid $35.02. Bid $25.02. Bid $101.16. <laughs> Because odds are somebody's going to come in and snipe you, and they're going to bid $100, or they're going to bid $101, and then the auction's going to end up ending, and you're going to have it for $101.16. So many people will do that. And another thing, I've been at auctions before where they have, um, the, if you've been to public auctions enough times, you know what the auctioneer is and what the auctioneer's rules are. Mm -hmm. And I've been at auctions before where the auctioneer will go by fives or tens or whatever. Once they hit a certain number, they go by a different amount. Okay. And you may be on the off number. So let's say the auctioneer does it by fives, but once they hit 100, they go $10 increments. Right. And you've bid 90. I could bid 95. You're going to bid 100. I have to bid 110. Right. But if I jump the bid to 100, if I go, no, 100, that forces you to go jump to 110. So if you know the rules of how the auctioneer does their bidding, um, how many times at an auction have you been there where the person, you know, everybody, 
the auctioneer gets it down to ten dollars and forty eight cards oh, go yeah. up. A lot of times, if you know that it's a hundred dollar item and the auctioneer starts it at fifty and you raise your card at fifty instead of waiting to get down to the ten dollars, yeah. sometimes scare, you blow you everybody scare, out of the scare, water. You, scare them out of the way, yeah. you end up getting, you know, obviously if it's a thousand dollar item, people are going to start bidding. Yeah. But any number of times, I've bid fifty dollars, and I and I know I told this story before, but but it absolutely is true. It was at a public auction that had a stack of comic books with an X Men ninety four in it, and. Nice. The auctioneer started at $25. I raised my card, complete silence, and I won it for $25 a pile. <laughs> now, maybe I could have gotten it for 10 Right. But why, I didn't want a chance. chance. And the other thing, too, is a lot of people, especially, and I don't mean to gender stereotype or I gender identify here or anything like that, but men tend to be aggressive. And if I get you to bid against me, you may want to win it. Sure. And... If I blow you out of the water with my $25 bid and you never even get engaged, I mean, how many times do you see somebody bidding and you know they really don't want to bid again, but they do because right. they just oh, get yeah. into it like, oh, oh yeah. I can win it, I can win it. Yep. So the, the fewer people you have going against you bidding, the better off you are because, again, right. And again, not to not to stereotype here, but a lot of times men are dopey and we get it going where we want to win and we end up overpaying just to win. Yeah. So if I can keep you from bidding... Exactly. I'm not, at the very least, you may not throw your card up one or two more times right. and end up costing me more money. Yeah. Did you have any more tips by any chance? Yes. Show me a winner that likes to lose. Oh, well, let's see. <laughs> never <laughs> never bet on a uh, three legged horse, yes. <laughs> um, Amazon. Named so, Blue Factory. Exactly. So for Amazon, if you're printing orders on Amazon, every now and then, and this probably just started a few months back maybe, and, uh, and 100% of the items that we print out, is for post office. It's just convenient. We, we're happy with them. Again, another story down the road. I'll get <laughs> Most of the time. Yeah, one Most one time. horror story, but uh, for now we're happy with them. We use them 100 percent of the time. And every now and then there'll be some glitch where you know I'm, uh, I have a book. It's medium mail. It's a pound. It's what is it? Three bucks, roughly, or in there. Two eighty nine. Two eighty nine. And they'll say UPS, Fed, FedEx, or overnight. No post office option whatsoever. Then for a while, I'm like, well, I print it out. Then we had to use stamps.com, then go back and put the tracking in, which is a pain in the butt. Uh, so it comes up again maybe a few days later. I said, well, let me just change the weight for the heck of it or change the way it's shipping. And about 50% of the time, it will change to the post office. Um, you know, you just, like, 8 ounces may not work, 6 ounces may work, 12 ounces may work. So sometimes, you know, spend, you know, 30 seconds or a minute adjusting that, and you might get lucky. And it does save you time down the road where you don't have to go on to stamps or postoffice.com, print it, and then put the tracking back in. So that's my, I think that's my last tip for today. Well, a couple of other quick <laughs> things. That I, on the Amazon shipping, now there are occasions where, and, and it's happened to me when something's shipping to Alaska or Hawaii, where you can only use priority. And it happened to me one time in a heavy book. And the reason why is because the media mail would not meet Amazon's deadlines. Okay. Um, that has happened. That had nothing, you know, I was allowed to use the post office. Yeah. I just couldn't use media mail. It's only happened once or twice, and I bit the bullet on it. And I said, I'm not going to screw around and try to find a way around it. And Amazon wants it there in X number of days. So I just said, well, mm -hmm. I lost money on this deal. Oh, well. Right. And took care of it. You know, and we did the video before about the most hated words, cost of doing business. <laughs> um, that definitely is a cost of doing business. A uh, couple of other little tricks there. And we also had a video about this. Uh, you've got stamps.com. You can go to UPS or US, yeah, USPS.com, but you cannot ship certain things internationally you can't ship international uh first class that way or at least the last time i checked you couldn't yeah. they were it had been going on two years that it was uh, temporarily unavailable um so after two years i'm thinking they really don't want you to do it exactly and you can't ship media mail that way now i know a lot of people use stamps there are a lot of people out there that use pirate ship uh, but we had the video showing you that if you go into your paypal you can actually print shipping labels off of paypal for things that were not purchased on uh paypal so if you just click on the shipping labels and the third option over it will get, let you print shipping labels that way. But I've got another quick little tip. I ran into a, well, two other tips. One tip is with the international. Um, what's one of the biggest problems you see with international trying to ship things out that way? It's an error that comes up all the time. For me too? Yeah, it does. All right. Well, refresh my memory. <laughs> I know you know, but they might not know. Um, 
and, and I'm going to make this up because I don't remember the exact uh, parameters, but ship to address cannot contain more than 35 characters. Oh, yes. Um, that ends up being a real puzzle sometimes where you basically you end up cutting and pasting wherever you can cut and paste to get the entire address because yeah. they've got address one, address right, two. Yeah, they've space. also got yeah. the contact area. So, oh, that sounds like the business. I'm going to put that up in the contact. Yeah. That sounds like this. That sounds like that. Yep. Why did they repeat the country name twice? I don't know. I'm going to take one of those out. I've never had a problem with one of those not getting there as long, you know, uh, Sometimes I'll even go so far if it's really a long address, mm -hmm. taking away the spaces, but then capitalizing, figuring that you know, Plaza del Rio. Well, if yeah. there's no spaces, but I capitalize the P, the D, and the R, somebody reading it is going to go, "Well, I didn't even put any spaces in there," but they can still right. read the entire yeah. thing. Now, what about cost paid? You leave that in, or you move that up? But sometimes they'll say cost paid. You oh, really? I've never I've had, had that. A bunch no. of those. Yeah, so. I just copy and paste and put them in another line, just so it might be something that's drop shipped or something or oh, a gift, okay. maybe. I don't yeah. know. Okay. Yeah. So maybe they that. don't charge them mm -hmm. customs if they maybe they prepay customs. I don't know, but it's happened a few times in the last couple. Weeks. And that's on eBay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Um, but that leads me into to my last tip over here, and that's a situation that I had today, and it was on eBay, and I'm going to make the street up because I don't remember. I do remember it was in Philadelphia. We'll say it's Walnut Street. I don't know. I had to ship something. To 1249 Walnut Street, apartment 104. Mm -hmm. And this has never happened to me before on eBay. It's happened before on Amazon, but not on eBay. We cannot... The only options that came up were UPS and FedEx. There was no post office. And it said the post office could not deliver to that address. Now, I know that UPS and that cannot deliver to P.O. boxes. Mm -hmm. But I've never seen a, a case before on eBay where it could not be delivered. I said, well, that's kind of odd. I said, I think I watched one of our videos where we gave a tip on how to do printing on PayPal. <laughs> so I went over to PayPal and copy pasted everything. We cannot ship to this address using the post office. <laughs> and I said, that's odd. So what would you do at that point? I would hand it to paper going and say, take care of this for me. <laughs> on a Monday morning, yeah, yes, yeah. you would. Figure this out. So what I did is I went to Google and I put in the address. And guess what comes up? 1247 1249 Walnut Street, apartment 104. Okay. So I said, hmm, it's some kind of a, like a row house with two addresses on it. Let me try this. So I went back to PayPal and I put 1247 1247, and I was able to ship it to them. Nice. Um, and then, of course, then you copy your tracking and put it in. So sometimes a little extra detective work on your side will come up with this. Um, any number of times you'll get something or other as well where the zip code's not right. And yep. you do a search on error and you end up at the post office site. You yeah. get the actual zip code because the person didn't put the right one in or whatever the case happens to yeah. be. So sometimes you've got to do a little extra detective work in order to get it out. But, you know, those hopefully are all tips to save you money, save you time, or keep you from pulling out your hair when you run into one of these uh, situations. Uh, hopefully that will help you some. Do leave uh, any tips that you might have down below. We definitely like to read about them. And if there's things we don't know, we'll probably bring them in the, uh, in the video up in the future. Uh, hit the like button if you could and subscribe. We definitely do appreciate it. And we'll see you next video. Take care. Bye-bye.